There is a sort of funny line between Sophie Aldred and mm. Ace. Whilst Ace is not Sophie Aldred, Sophie Aldred brought quite a lot to Ace. About a year ago, I sat down at my computer to make a video about my favourite classic Doctor Who companion Ace and this jacket. Ever since I set eyes on Ace, I've been totally obsessed with identifying the vast array of badges and patches that appear throughout her time on screen, all to make my very own replica. But what I found made my head spin. There have been more than 50 objects on Ace's jacket throughout Doctor Who. Some appear in every episode and some just once. Badges appear, disappear, change location, change colour, change size, and fall off. My video guide attempted to break down each and every one of the items on the jacket, in the hopes of helping other fans and cosplayers make sense of this wildly confusing costume. The project took hours to put together, but with the help of some very dedicated members of the Doctor Who community, I was able to identify each and every one of them. Had I really done it? Of course not. That would have been too easy. I still had so many questions about this jacket. Where did the badges come from? Why do they change so often? And how many jackets are there? I knew that the best person to tell this story is the person who wore it. And that person, as you might have guessed, is Sophie Aldred, who played Ace. Oh, and conveniently... I watched it and I thought, oh no, she got that wrong. Oh, oh I no. must put her out about that. Yep, she had seen the video guide. Sophie reached out to me directly, offering to have a chat and set the record straight once and for all. What you're about to see is the true story behind Ace's jacket from Sophie Aldred herself. It was my first telly. I'd done a lot of sort of children's theatre, fringe theatre, where, you know, you're going out and get your costume. And so, of course, when I got into this Doctor Who mm. thing, I thought, well, that's probably what you do anyway, especially when after the read-through, Andrew Cartmill came up to me and he said, you look great, he said. Do you think that's the sort of thing Ace would wear? And I was yeah. wearing a stripy blue and white T-shirt, army cut-off shorts, mm. uh, Doc Martin shoes. Oh. You see the theme. So I started thinking about what Ace would mm. look like. And the costume designer, Richard Croft, was absolutely lovely. And I took him a copy of the Face magazine because I was so trendy. I used to read the Face magazine. Because mm. I was 24 then when I was doing Dragonfire, whereas Ace was meant to be 16. Oh. I kind of was thinking, now what do 16-year-old girls wear in clubs? So I looked and there were the, a couple of great photos. There's the one with a girl in a, a parka and she's got badges and safety pins and stuff all over her. You know, they used yeah. to um, nick car badges off cars, put them around their necks. We thought we'd better not do that because yeah. it might encourage the kids to do it even more. What I wanted really was a little, you know, those sort of bum freezer jackets that are quite short. This actually was like that when it was new. I think we got this in Millets in Oxford Street and then we went to se several shops to get these uh, sort of patches. And the same day we went to um, Christopher's Place, I think it's called, but Ryan by Selfridges, to get me, in contrast, an outfit for doing my first ever press call. And that, in contrast, was this off the shoulder, you know, revealing remember, little t-shirt yeah. number and a pretty little skirt. Nothing like Ace would ever yes, wear. Yes, exactly, yeah. But of course, yeah. John Nathan Turner knew it would get in the papers. John was often trying, well, could you just take the jacket off and <laughs> hang it on your shoulder, you know? Or could you just... I think that's one of the reasons why I like Ace so much, because I loved having a companion that you know, wore a big oversized, quite masculine jacket and running around with baseball bats and smashing up stuff. When I first got the part, I thought, what the heck are they on about? Because I remembered Leela with her sort of chamois leather yeah. costume showing lots of legs. And then I remembered uh, Joe Grant, who was very sort of sweet. You kind of wanted to look after her, but get wearing some quite revealing mini skirts. But my impression of Doctor Who girls, Doctor Who girls as they called them in the day, they ran around quarries 
sprained their ankles because they were invariably wearing high heels and would scream at monsters. I think during the filming of The Happiness Patrol, the floor manager said, it's j it says just, just scream. And I said, Ace doesn't scream. Andrew Cartmel, I can't praise him mm. highly enough because he totally got this whole tomboy vibe. What sort of patches were you going for? What did you have in mind for Ace? Well, I remember Richard saying, oh, I think these space ones would be good, wouldn't they? And then I can't really remember what we bought on that day, but then I brought in a load of my own badges. I loved badges growing up. In fact, I've still got this little sort of jam jar full of badges and things that I had when I was really little. The big ones and probably the most well-known ones are the Blue Peter badges. Yeah. When I stood in front of the camera for the first time in, in Dragonfire, they did a sort of weird kind of up and down thing. It was a bit, it felt a bit <laughs> spooky, you know. It was good that we did that because I was wearing stripy mm. tights and they strobed. To my great yeah. disappointment, because oh, I, yeah. I looked like a sort of mad bee, the floor manager came up and he said, um, uh, Sophie, can I just ask you a question about your Blue Peter badges? I said, he said, are they your own? I said, yeah, why? There was this thing at TV Centre called the Ring Main. Anyone in the offices at the BBC could see what was being filmed in the studios at any right, one time. So you yeah. could just go, oh, I wonder what's in Studio One today. And Blue Peter had obviously had the Doctor Who button pressed, or Studio One, I think it was. And somebody had spotted that I was wearing Blue Peter badges. You are not allowed to wear Blue Peter badges unless you've unless earned you them yourself. Them. So I said, yeah, they're my own. I probably got them in about 1974 and five or six, or maybe even earlier. The offices then had to check. They had a card index. Drawers and drawers and drawers of card files. All children who win badges have index cards and we put down their name, their address, why they won their badge and then all incoming badge-worthy letters are checked against this which means we can send children different letters. So some poor person was dispatched <laughs> to look up 1970s and find the little card which said Sophie Aldred. Yeah, and why did you get your BP badges? Okay, so the first one... I wish I still had the letters. I probably do somewhere, mm. which I think was the white one. So I'd sent in an idea for a make because I just, I always wanted to be on Blue Peter and I was always making things. And my brother and I had come up with this thing, which was we'd got an old washing up liquid bottle, decorated it like a space rocket, put it on the end of the um, hose. And if you turn the tap on really hard, eventually just goes <laughs> So I got the badge. And then the second one, which was actually not this one because I dropped this in the quarry and during oh no. uh, filming so of Greatest Show in the Galaxy. My mum had taken me to an exhibition in Deptford, which wasn't trendy Deptford, it was grimy Deptford. Right, yeah. But there was an installation and it was in a porter cabin and you walked in and there was furniture, this family, the kitchen, everything but it was all made of cake. It's and I thought, weird. that's the kind of thing that Blue Peter should come and yeah. document. Yeah. Another great story about the jacket is that, in fact, the initial inspiration, before everything, mm. before the Face magazine, before everything, I was in Manchester doing Fiddler on the Roof when I was doing the auditions mm. for um, Doctor Who. One night we went out to a club. We were sitting there, sipping our drinks, and there I saw a guy at the bar and he had a black flight jacket like this cool. with one blue Peter badge on. I said, oh, hi, I know this is a weird question, but I really like your jacket and your blue Peter badge. Where did you get it from? And he said, oh, well, um, I work on the programme. We got into studio on that first day for Dragonfire and guess who Sylvester's dresser is? This guy, You're Michael, joking. who wore the jacket with the blue Peter badge on. And he ended up being Sylvester's dresser on a lot, oh, a lovely. lot of the stories. There's quite a lot of motorcycle stuff as well. Is that like yes. a, what's that about? Is that like, just well, the, is that another fashion You see, thing, the or? weird thing is that there is a sort of funny line between Sophie Aldred and mm. Ace. And whilst Ace is not... Sophie Aldred. Sophie Aldred brought quite a lot to Ace, including the motor, the motorbikes, you know, the 
Harley Davidson because that's why I was cast in Doctor Who in the first place because uh, they wanted somebody who looked younger than they were and who could ride a motorbike and I had a bike and I had leathers and I wrote tootles around on my motorbike. It was a Honda 125 but it was a sort of sports bike, red, white and blue and looked really lovely and I had these great leathers i've still got them actually and it was pretty cool i have to say it does turn up in doctor who at some point doesn't it yeah it turns up i sit on a motorbike in survival and yeah. i think yes at last i'm getting to ride a bike and then right Sylvester at the pulls end. me off and then actually um, when chris chibnall was saying you know what would you like to do in power of the doctor i said can i ride a motorbike and he said um, I said, I suppose health and safety. He said, mm, don't think we can have you riding a motorbike. But jumping off a building on a parachute, it's, it's being fired cool. up by safe mine is all right. <laughs> and the funny thing is with Sylvester in survival, he'd never ridden a bike in his life. So they got him on this bike and they just assumed that he could ride it. So there he went off into the sunset in, on Horsenton Hill in Perivale. He suddenly thought, how do you stop this thing? Nobody had told him. And so he had to sort of just stunt fall off the bike to get off because he didn't realise where the brakes were or anything. I think health and so, safety probably wasn't really a thing I in the mean. 80s. I know there's a bit of a story behind the camel as well. Oh yes, I used to draw camels for some weird reason. When I was 11, um, my best friend Vanella Burns and I used to draw camels. I could draw you one na right now, very quickly. And then my mum sort of spotted it. She always gives me stuff with camels on but she gave me this badge again i don't know where she got it mm. but it was a complete one off this was the original my fanderson fan club badge i did my dissertation at university on jerry anderson and puppets i'd actually joined fanderson when i found sig a magazine in a, a sort of very primitive version of Forbidden Planet, you know, yeah, really early yeah. days. And now, of course, I've worked with Jamie a lot. And yes, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Bizarre. Here we've got my Thunderbirds badge. Again, because I did my dissertation about Thunderbirds, so that had to go on. I played lacrosse at school. Ace would never in a million years have played lacrosse. No. It's, a, it's a posh girls game because I went to a posh day school. I was actually captain for uh, the sixth form, my, the first year and the second mm. year in sixth form. And that's my school colours. So, oh. but I thought, you know, hey, let's put yeah. that on. And then, of course, there's Flower Child's pin. Now, that is not mm -hmm. actually uh, the original one. I don't know what happened to that. This was made for me by a lovely fan. That is a fireman's button. And I think I had just had that lying around in a drawer, so I wanted to put that on. And then talking of firemen, Patrick in America sent me this, which is a first responder's badge oh. for 9-11 um, and he was a first responder oh, wow. and so I thought actually that would be a really nice thing to have on modern aces jacket yes, exactly, yeah. as a sort yeah. of tribute. Um, again this is a bit of a Sophie thing rather than an mm. ace thing because ace was from Perivale so she'd have supported probably QPR. I supported Charlton Athletic and I kind of wanted to give them a bit of publicity as well but I lost the original Charlton one. It had the away colours on as well, which was yellow, yellow yeah. down at the bottom. And it was a bit bigger. That was already on the jacket. The Ace Roofing Company. Yeah. And there must have been somebody called Lee. Uh, it's like yeah. when you have a, you know, work for McDonald's or something. And yes, you have exactly. Your badge. It's patch. Betty Boop. I was always a bit like, would she have had Betty Boop on there? But maybe she would. I don't know. Oh, Rupert Bear. That's uh, another of my own one. ones. So my mum, again, my mum is mad on Rupert. And when we were growing up, she had all her old Rupert annuals. She's mm. still got them, actually. Um, and so I fell in love with Rupert as well. And I put that on oh. for her, really. Some of them, they just um, put on for me. So like the, I mean, that obviously, you know, the ace, uh, the pack of cards. Was Ace trying to make a statement about capitalism? It was funny because at the time, I remember, there was this sort of uh, fashion it was a fashion thing about Soviet stuff. I had a hat, a real army hat, a Russian army mm. hat. I never even registered really. And I think this was just another badge. But then having said that, I think Ace totally would have been against capitalism. Yeah. And Sylvester and I were very much of the, and Andrew Cartmel were very much united in our, shall we say, um, thoughts that the government wasn't working mm. for, for most people in the country. Yeah. You can't begin to understand 
what the atmosphere was like in a funny way mm. now, looking back. You know, there's nothing wrong with capitalism per se, but then if you see people sort of glorifying their own wealth and then you also see at the other end of the scale yes, exactly. people with absolutely nothing, then I do find that that doesn't work for me. So the Dragonfire jacket is very, very different. Yes. The first jacket that you wear has badges on it that don't come back. I know a thing or two about that. Do you? Yeah. I was originally going up for Ray in Delta and the Bannermen, hence the motorbike riding. If you look really, really closely at the bus driver in Delta and the Bannermen, yeah. you can see some of Ace's badges on his Not costume. Joking. Yeah. So I reckon they took the badges off his costume and put, put them on Ace's off. jacket. Probably to populate the jacket. But yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. After Dragonfire, of course, we had at least six months break. And I went off and did corners and words and pictures. Sylvester did another season of Pied Piper at the National Theatre. And then we reconvened for Remembrance of the Daleks. I must say, I didn't really pay much attention to what was on my jacket. Yeah. So I think that they must have just like been chopping and changing. And, and then they obviously had another jacket as well because they needed one if something if something ever happened to the main one that I was wearing which was this one and I can tell it's this one because it's got this it's got pocket an enormous inside. pocket massive pocket is that sewn in yeah that it's just so, yeah, like it's you can in. see it's just a piece of nylon material that they've Amazing. just taken and and sewn in and the reason for that is that I was often carrying a prop or two yeah and I was like where am I going to put these um, and yeah. so my Nitro 9 would go in here. Love that. And it was also very handy for a script pocket as well. Yeah, it's about got, script size, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, we got these small versions, you know, these A5 yeah. sides, we call them now. We didn't call them sides in those days. But we'd get these, uh, for, and Sylvester, as you probably know, he'd have a, an in-tray and an out-tray in his pockets on his jacket. You can see in some shots that one side of his jacket is quite full up. And then he'd put the ones, the scenes that we'd done from one side, he'd put them into the other side. So, you know, whenever yeah, you're doing yeah. anything, you need to have your script kind Goodness. of quite close. Yeah. So this was ideal for that. Probably and also that. on location, it was brilliant for hot water bottles. And oh, I put nice. some sort of hand warmer things yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just Fantastic. Like, yeah. So how many jackets were there all together? Well... Good question. So Remembrance, there was also the stunt jacket for Tracy Eben, who did the jumping mm. through the window bit. So yeah. she had to have that second jacket. Also, I remember in Remembrance, you know, the bit at the end where the little girl is spinning around in the living room. She does a bolt of sort of uh, laser and it smashes the mirror. Well, when we filmed that, you know, it, I was kind of near it and the glass shattered. Now, sugar glass, it goes to a kind of sugary powder like icing sugar. So this stuff was all oh over my, my jacket. God. And costume came up and they were trying to try to brush it off, you know, like this. Yeah, it's yeah. taking forever. So someone said, bring in the other jacket. So they brought in oh. the other jacket, which must have been the Trace's stunt, stunt, stunt jacket. jacket. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, there were things like there was only ever one of this. There was only ever one of quite a lot of the badges like um you know the, the yeah. Rupert one that I remember sense. sitting yeah. on the floor uh with my jacket laid out like this with two dresses and they were pinning yeah. one to the other going right that one goes there that one goes there time was ticking away John Nathan mm. Turner was blowing a fuse up in the gallery and that's when they decided that they needed to have Several, Several jackets, jackets yeah. that, that, and that's why yeah. they don't look the same. There's a jacket I've seen recently owned by Chris and John, thank you very much. We think it must be the stunt jacket. It hasn't got the logo on the back. Right. It's, that's been yeah. taken off for some, I don't know what reason. The reason why we think it's probably the stunt jacket, mm. or certainly the one that I wore when they dunked me in water, yeah. which is quite a lot, is that some of the badges have gone a bit rusty. Right, some of the, the okay. And it just looks a little bit sort of dishevelled. Of course, you know, they kept chucking me in water. There yes. wasn't just the Lulworth Cove, you know, rebirthing moments. There was also 
um, in Silver Nemesis. There was me jumping in the river and it really was me. And then also the Lady of the Lake. That was actually me in Rutland Water, um, under the water. And it was really weird because I was sort of kneeling down. It wasn't very deep. But when you go underwater, you can't kind of tell which way is up. So we did several takes of that because the sword kept kind of coming out of the lake at funny angles like that. <laughs> you needed yeah, it to be like that. Yeah, we needed it. We really yeah, exactly. needed it to be like that. Uh, but there is another jacket as well that I think came from Bonham's, the auction, which I think had been round the exhibitions. Mm. That's the one. So there was another jacket. Right. Because if you think about it, we, were, we would film, say, in Silver Nemesis, me jumping in the water. And then, of course, the jacket would be all wet. Um, and then we'd need to move on and do a, another scene from maybe a different part of the day. So they'd have to take the wet one off and then put the dry yeah. one on me. And then dry the other one. And then dry the other yeah. one. So there's no rhyme or reason or sense. So yeah. don't worry. No wonder you can't make sense of Yeah, the, the exactly. I think, obviously, as fans, we've tried to because that's what we do. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. But it is a, it is a very difficult... Thing to make sense of I think because there have been so many yes. jackets and badges falling off and yeah. you know, different influences as well just think so. of all these badges that are just sort of hanging in around quarries. the place think of all quarries. these badges that are just yeah. like buried or on the beach <laughs> in Lull with Cove exactly. or wherever you know exactly. so I know you've brought some badges with you today yeah okay so the first one thing I want to show you is this Dickens and Jones Dickens and Jones was a um, department store and so this box was really given to me at the very beginning uh, by the costume department. And it's where all my spare badges and bits and bobs were put, you know, when I was on set. So I would put my own watch and my own mm. stuff in there. So this is my Tintin watch, which I, I love Tintin. I love the graphics as well. But it's very broken and yeah. it doesn't work. But I wore that um, for a lot of the series and that's my own watch and I wore that again in Power of the Doctor Aww. and Tales of the TARDIS. I was desperately trying to get it into Tales of the TARDIS, yeah. you know, when I was lovingly stroking the things oh, and yeah. the kite and things like that, but I don't think you could see no. it. And then these are, I bought these myself for the 25th anniversary. They're those sort of things that journalists wear on their sleeves to hold their sleeves up. Oh. You can see that I've sort of pulled yeah. my sleeves up and I've got these my, I'm going to have to go jacket. back and look at the yeah. uh, look at the episodes. Oh, I've got these. These are earrings. I think they're from Battlefield. They're yeah. copper, so they're very dirty those? now. But my mum made those because she oh. she makes as a hobby. For, she's made for years and years lovely jewellery and um, great things. So oh, there's oh, an extra one. Extra yeah, one. Yeah, that's an extra one. I don't know whether that fell off or now this is like. What the heck is that, do you think? Well, in Remembrance of the Daleks, I decided to wear this Batman earring that my friend Wendy, in fact, she was my uh, flatmate, she gave it to me for my birthday, I think. And then we were in the schoolroom doing the stunt, setting up mm. for the stunt, the big stunt where I dive under the desk and jump on the desks and so on. And all of a sudden, someone went, where's your earring? And everyone looked around, scrabbled around the floor, couldn't see it anywhere. And so they said, right, we've got to get another one. Where's it from? And I said, oh, Wendy. <laughs> so I had to go off to a landline, because of course, no mobiles, yeah. ring Wendy and say, uh, where did you get the <laughs> earring from? And it turned out to be a stall in Covent Garden on oh. Covent Garden Market. So this was made for me by somebody in the costume department. Mm. It's a little, it's a bit of paper. It's not even cardboard. It's yeah. lasted all this time. Love, I know. So, Tales of the TARDIS, Ace appears with a blazer and some badges. Were those badges that you brought along yourself? Well, when I um, got down to the costume department, which was kind of like a, a screen and a, and a costume rail at Bad Wolf, I'd brought a suit that mm. I'd worn in one shot from Power of the Doctor. And I thought to myself, I'm going to just take it down because I really like it. So then when I turned up to um, the Tales of the TARDIS, I thought, oh, no, I didn't bring badges for the lapel. Pandora, who was doing the costumes, she Amazing. had found the lightning bolt yeah. and um, the rainbow. I yeah. said, absolutely. And she said, um, how about 
the Harley Davidson. So yeah. I said, yes, those are all brilliant. The Bolt um, comes from Scribbler Shop. It's on a card. It's on a like a birthday card, oh, and it um, says something like "Girls love glitter" or something like that. <laughs> and it's got which is, yeah, and it's yeah. pink. It's so unaced. Yeah, exactly. But the yeah. actual Bolt of, of is, Lightning is, amazing, is yeah. there was a trailer for one of the collection box sets as well. I think that you wear a suit in. Yes, that's right. That well, that same? was the initial impetus for that. I see. And yeah. uh, Russell Minton, who um, mm. is the man behind the incredible man behind all those trailers rung me up and said what do you think you know ace is doing is going to be doing this pete mc pete written this yeah and i said yeah i think she'd be wearing a like a, quite a high powered suit he said yeah go out and buy one so i thought oh great got to go shopping yeah. again." <laughs> so yeah so that's where yeah. that whole idea of yeah. the besuited ace came from and then the badges i didn't even think about it and then ray holman said would you like to wear badges in power of the doctor I said, oh yes, absolutely. And he got a handful of them, including the Ace Forbidden Planet badge. And I said, I think that's a bit too meta. Too meta, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> and I said, how did you know about those notes? Because the notes, obviously, they look exactly like the things on my T-shirt. Yeah. And he yeah. said, I didn't. It was just like, it was just pure luck. Oh, amazing. This is my cosplay, which I was, I was wearing earlier, but I was too hot. So I took it off. <laughs> yes. Are there any here that you have stories about? Let's have a look. There's a pirate pin. Yes. Which... Well, I think, again, this is have a look at um, Delta and the Bannerman, because that might very well be from that bus conductors as well. I think the whistle, which is on this one yeah. as well. I think that was mine as well. And I was kind of just thinking... Oh, well, it's sort of football, referees, whistle, because I'm really into football, and I think Ace would be too, especially now. I mean, what with the Lionesses, she'd yeah. be, she'd yeah, yeah, she'd be definitely loving that, yeah, be yeah. Loving that wouldn't she? 100%. Yeah. Oh, and then this is the Watchman, isn't it? Now, I can't really remember, but Andrew Cartmel was a big fan of um, graphic novels, mm. and I'd never really even heard of them. And also Steve Cook, who used to take photos, he worked for... Um, uh, Marvel Comics, and oh, he was a graphic artist as well. They went crazy about this badge. I was like, oh, no, no, it's just a badge, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, but yeah. they, yeah, they said, oh yeah, that's the Watchman. Yeah. Like the, the um, Baker Street Irregulars. I had no yeah. idea what that was, and Andrew Cartmel knew all about that. Um, I've got a really fat lacrosse badge. <laughs> like, I couldn't well, find one as you small were as obviously that. better at lacrosse <laughs> than me then. Quite a lot of them are American. Yeah. And I think, well, maybe in those days we didn't do these sorts of yeah. things. And well, maybe they Bell Atlantic is a telecoms company. Yeah. Yes. And it, I used to think that was Safe Diver. I used to think that that was a diving badge. Oh, I think the engineers great. had to get this badge to like safely drive the truck so they can go and install phone lines or something. Oh wow, because in remembrance Ace does drive the van doesn't she? Mm. Um, and we swap, we do that funny thing in the tunnel, we go through the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was the safe driver in that case yes. because Sylvester was, he couldn't see without his glasses. Do you know this one? No. We had thousands of pounds worth of equipment on the passenger side um, that was shooting through the window and we had the window down and we had John Nathan Turner and uh, the sound guy covered with a, a, a blanket in the back of the van That's amazing. Um, with, the, with the monitor and everything yeah. and Sylvester said to me he said um, just make sure that I'm not getting too close to the lampposts he said because I haven't got my glasses on I was like what Shame now there's a story well. behind this and I don't think you'll see that until after Greatest Show in the Galaxy the reason for that being, after Greatest Show in the Galaxy, Nord the Vandal and I got together Sweet. and Daniel Peacock um, gave me this, partly because of the motorbike thing yeah. and partly because he says that stands for bloody Sophie Aldrin. <laughs> and the this, nuclear power, no thanks. Yeah, which, uh, Ace's activism. Yeah, I think, it, I think my one was maybe a bit smaller than that. This is my old version, so this is oh. my newer, new and improved small there we replacement. go. Always finding new But I think that's good, it, so. and I think I um, love it when fans also um, come and show me the jackets that they've made with their own I love badges those. and their yeah, own take yeah. on it, and they've got their favourite things and their yeah. stuff. And I've seen, seen I've seen quite a few fans uh, do their own letter on the back as well. You know, oh, E that's... or J or you know. I guess the great thing about Ace's jacket is that you can customise it, and it doesn't really matter if you've got. The exact ones because Ace's jacket changes so much. Exactly. Anyway. So you know there is it, no perfect version. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
thank you so much it's Fantastic. been wonderful thank you now of course i've had to head down to my local scribbler i managed to get two of the lightning bolt badges these were the last two so maybe word has got round so if you're planning to put together a suited and booted ace cosplay they exist so just wanted to say once again a massive thank you to sophie for taking part in this interview i had such a fantastic time and i hope you found it interesting too do let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it and of course if there's anyone else you'd like me to interview in between all of the youtube videos i'm uploading to instagram tiktok and youtube short so keep an eye out for those and also if you haven't seen it already Last year, I took part in the official Doctor Who podcast. You can find me, Gina Dawson and Terrell Charles getting together and discussing the 60th anniversary specials and also the Christmas episode, The Church on Ruby Road, very recently. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And also, once again, here's the link to the guide, which I uploaded last year, if you want to take a look. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.